Hey, it's Jordan with TYT and TYT Network. It is Wednesday, March 30th, 2016. Pretty sunny here in New York. Uh, I've been doing some reporting research this week before we go to Wisconsin. Eric and I will be headed there on Sunday. I was really, really interested today in focusing in depth on Hillary Clinton's donations and fundraisers. She's a candidate who says she's a progressive who wants to get things done and has said, you know, her Wall Street connections, her big paid speeches to banks like Goldman Sachs, her donations over the years from Wall Street don't affect her and don't mean a thing. Well, you could be the judge of that, but I have a laundry list here of uh, recent fundraisers she's done with some questionable characters. So here we go. Tonight, um, she's doing a fundraiser at the home of Ruth Porat and Anthony uh, Paduano. They're a married couple. Uh, here in New York. And the at the fundraiser, uh, the co-chairs are going to be donating $27,000. And the co-hosts of the fundraisers will be donating 10000 Honestly, I don't really know the difference between co-chairs and co-hosts, but a lot of money being donated. Let's put it that way. Um, a little information here for you. Ruth Porat, she's the CFO of Google, Chief Financial Officer. But before Google, she had a really, really interesting uh, job. She was the former chief financial officer of Morgan Stanley, the big, the big bank on Wall Street. She was called the most powerful woman on Wall Street. More power to you, Ruth, but she was the, uh, coined by her peers the most, pa most powerful woman on Wall Street. Uh, in 2011 alone, she made over $10 million. In 2013, according to the New York, po New York Times, she turned down the opportunity to be considered for the deputy treasury secretary. Uh, according to the Times, she, quote, decided to take her name out of the running, in part because she didn't want to face questions about her finances and was worried about a highly charged environment in Washington against Wall Street bankers. Essentially, she did not want uh, people looking into her finances and she didn't want to be castigated because of the, you know, the victims that are the Wall Street bankers. That's why she turned down uh, the even consideration to be Deputy Treasury Secretary. Her husband, Anthony Paduano, is a lawyer who represents financial services firms. A according to his website, they represent financial services forms, firms on matters of customer disputes and regulatory matters. Essentially, his firm tries to uh, deregulate for big companies and big financial institutions uh, so they don't have to deal with regulations. This is, these are two big donors who are hosting a fundraiser tonight in New York. The former most powerful woman on Wall Street and her husband, whose law firm tries to help big financial institutions with regulation matters, while Hillary Clinton says she's going after Wall Street. Moving on to a fundraiser that happened on Monday in Chicago. Uh, on Monday, her campaign held a fundraiser uh, with several, several interesting hosts, I would say, who each were donating $27,000 to the Clinton campaign. One was Raj Fernando who is the CEO of Chopper Trading, which is a high-frequency trading firm. They trade in securities, um, very similar to hedge funds in New York. Uh, Fernando has given between $100,000 and $250,000 to the Clinton Foundation over the years, according to ABC News. He also gave $30,000 to the advocacy group uh, Women Count, which, which is a group that indirectly helped Hillary Clinton uh, settle her campaign debts from 2008. Uh, Hillary Clinton didn't pay off her last debt from the campaign, her first presidential campaign, until 2013. So Raj Fernando donated to a group that helped her uh, settle those debts. That's, that's not even the best part. Okay. From ABC, from ABC News, September 2012. For one of President Obama's top fundraisers, the appointment last year to an elite group of State Department security advisors appeared to be an odd fit. Raj Fernando a Chicago securities trader, has never touted any international credentials, yet he was appointed alongside an august collection of nuclear scientists, former cabinet secretaries, and members of Congress to advise Secretary of State Hillary Clinton on crucial security matters. One current member of the International Securities Advisory Board told ABC News 
that none of the other members could figure out who Fernando was or why he was there. Chicago stockbroker Roz Fernando. He was named to the prestigious International Security Advisory Board, but resigned last year shortly after ABC News asked about his qualifications to be on the board. It was not something Fernando wanted to talk about this week. Who are you? With ABC News. Yeah. This is so let's get this straight. Uh, a Wall Street trader, securities trader, uh, donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, and then more to, for Hillary Clinton specifically. Uh, and then he's appointed alongside nuclear scientists to advise her on security matters. Seem transactional to you? Maybe a little you scratch my back or you fund my wallet, you, you know, fill my wallet. I'll put you on a prestigious uh, board of advisors. That very transactional to me. Another fundraiser in attendance was former Clinton finance chair, uh, David Rosen. Rosen helped her uh, f make huge, huge uh, rounds of money for her first Senate run in 2000. According to the Washington Post, Rosen helped raise roughly $100 million for Democrat can Democratic candidates from the ward to the White House. Essentially, he was a prolific fundraiser in Chicago. Uh, Rosen was charged with false filings to the Federal Election Commission uh, for a star-studded celebrity ga uh, gala in 2000. He understated the costs of the event by nearly $800,000 in his filings to the FEC, um, according to the Washington Post. Rosen claimed the event's host misled him on how much it would cost. Uh, very important to note, Rosen was acquitted of the charges, but it just goes to show you the, the circle around Hillary Clinton, uh, it's, it, it's, it, there's shadiness, there's shady behavior, loose with the rules, uh, those sort of things. Another guest in attendance was Jeffrey Hamm, who is a big lawyer at a very, very uh, wealthy law firm in Chicago, uh, who specializes in mergers, acquisitions, and buyouts. Guess who one of his prized clients was uh, at the start of his career and throughout his career? Mitt Romney's Bain Capital, if you remember from the 2012 election, is the premier uh, vulture capitals. You know, made a lot of money by watering down companies in debt, then flipping them and laying, flipping the companies and laying off tons of workers. Um, from ChicagoBusiness.com, fresh out of law school in 1985, Kirkland and Ellis LLP attorney Jeffrey Hams got a seat at the table when Mitt Romney came to town in pursuit of Bain Capital's first deal a leveraged buyout of medical equipment maker Calumet Coach Company. Representing private equity funds like Bain Capital, which Mr. Romney co-founded and ran, and a spin-off, Golden Gate Capital in San Francisco, was highly profitable and led to follow-on work with portfolio companies. So basically this guy, who's a huge prolific fundraiser for Hillary Clinton, uh, got in bed with Mitt Romney's Bain Capital, which laid off hundreds, if not thousands of people around the nation. Uh, helping Mitt Romney uh, become one of the wealthiest people in America. And these are the people surrounding Hillary Clinton. Yet, in, uh, you know, in the debates, in her campaign, she's a progressive who gets things done. She's going to go after Wall Street. Uh, if, if it's too big to fail, it's too big to jail. On March 21st, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, who I've interviewed recently, and we got pretty in-depth about uh, her her refusal to release her Wall Street transcripts. With respect to this, why is she the only person being asked to do this? Well, I mean, Democrats went with pitchforks against Mitt Romney for the tax returns. It's an issue of transparency. John Podesta hosted a fundraiser uh, with a bunch of current and former lobbyists. One of the really, really cringeworthy lobbyists but went by the name of Jeff Forbes. Forbes, uh, until 2015, was a registered lobbyist for the National Rifles Association the same National Rifles Association that Hillary Clinton has been knocking Bernie Sanders over the head with uh, based on some of uh, Bernie Sanders' past votes. Hillary Clinton's been saying she's going to go against the NRA and has made gun control a huge issue on her campaign, yet uh, an individual who is donating to her campaign and fundraisers for her was a registered lobbyist for the NRA uh, for years until last year. Uh, according to TheIntercept.com, Jeff Forbes has represented the NRA since 2009, and as of the last quarter of 2015, was still registered to lobby for them. On his lobbying disclosure, Forbes wrote that he was signed up to lobby for issues related to the Second Amendment rights, regulation and gun control, and tax and appropriations related to same issues related to corporate tax reform. 
During the 2013 push for universal background checks, Forbes is one of, the, one of a series of Democratic Party lab lobbyists employed by the NRA to kill that legislation. Forbes also lobbies for pharmaceutical companies, the same pharmaceutical companies that Hillary Clinton says she's going to go after. Forbes lobbies for Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, uh, the primary trade association representing the industry in Washington. In 2011, PHRMA paid Bill Clinton $200,000 for a speech while the organization was at the same time lobbying the Hillary Clinton-led State Department. The pharmaceutical organization has pressed for the proposed 12-nation Trans-Pacific Partnership, which obviously Hillary Clinton was called the gold standard, but is now vehemently against. Another lobbyist in attendance was Steve Elmendorf, who donated over $33,000 to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Uh, months before the DNC publicly said it had lifted the contribution ban for, from lobbyists. Uh, he, he is registered to lobby for Wall Street's banks like Citigroup and has previously lobbied for Goldman Sachs. Another lobbyist in attendance was Susan Brophy, who has lobbied the Obama administration and Congress for banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase. She's also advocated for energy companies Exelon on federal environmental rules. So if, if, if you're noticing a pattern here, Hillary Clinton at debates, Hillary Clinton in interviews, Hillary Clinton in her campaign uh, literature and emails that go out to us is attacking Bernie Sanders, is attacking Republicans, is saying that, give me an example of, of a time I've been influenced by donations. You're, 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 you're a smart audience. You're, you're, do you think that Hillary Clinton is having fundraisers with all these people for, who are lobbyists for the banks, for big oil, for big pharma, who, who are Wall Street traders, and she's going to get in office and go hard at the policies that make them rich? That's for you to decide. Another fundraiser earlier this month, Clinton held a fundraiser with private equity firm Kohlberg Kravis Roberts. That, that firm began investing heavily in fracking in 2009 the same fracking that Hillary Clinton has come out against vehemently. KKR began heavily investing in fracking, purchasing large shares of three North American oil and gas companies and selling two of them for billions in profits. The third was hit hard by plummeting gas prices and declared bankruptcy last year. But KKR was not deterred and still owns a large portfolio of small fossil fuel companies, at least two of which, uh, Cinco Industries and Comstock Resources, use fracking. So. Does this pass the smell test? Does Hillary Clinton coming out against fracking companies? But earlier this month, her campaign hosting fundraisers with a private equity firm that is heavily invested in fracking, the two things don't make sense. They don't go together. Another interesting note, Hillary Clinton is right now topping the list of candidates who have received from the defense industry. According to opensecrets.org, she's taken in $206,000 from the defense industry. Why would you think Hillary Clinton is at the top of the list for defense industry donations? Maybe because she voted for the Iraq war. Maybe because she's called for a no-fly zone over Syria. Maybe because she's called for a more muscular foreign policy. Uh, a lot of these are defense contractors who make money off of war and muscular foreign policy. And they're giving Hillary Clinton over $200,000 so far. Ted Cruz comes in second with uh, $200,000. And surprisingly, Bernie Sanders is third, which I'm not really getting because he's called for kind of a de-escalation. He's at 179000 uh, in donations from the defense industry. Something I found very funny and kind of interesting, it's, it's not specific to a dollar amount, but Hillary Clinton's chief strategist and also a pollster for her is Joel Benenson. He uh, was instrumental in Obama's campaigns for president. Benenson has come out on TV saying Bernie Sanders is running the most negative uh, campaign in the his history of the Democratic primary. He's also now said that Hillary Clinton uh, will debate Bernie Sanders when, quote unquote, his tone changes, when he alters his tone. Let's see if he goes back to the kind of tone he's going to set early on. If he does that, then we'll talk about debates. But we're not going to talk about so it. So no before. chance of a New York debate. I didn't say that. I said we're not going to talk about it. We're going to see what kind of tone he sets which started a very, uh, very, very popular Twitter meme, toned down for what, uh, in the defense of Bernie Sanders. Well, that same strategist, uh, Joel Benenson, his company is a strategic consulting firm. Guess who some of his top clients are? Big banks like Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase. This is a guy she is putting out on TV as one of her chief strategists. His firm consults for the big banks on Wall Street. So you make the call. 
Does that, does that make sense to you? But she goes after that corporate tax rate, that's when they will break with her. I, I think what all of these, and, and by the way, there's more, but I, I can't make a, you know, a, a two hour video, so I'm gonna do more of these as we go. But what, what all these fundraisers happening in real time, and you know, happening a few days ago and earlier in the month, uh, w what they're showing is two things. Number one, um, you know, Hillary Clinton is part of the revolving door. She's part of the revolving door between corporate America, the big banks, the lobbyists, the media, and Washington, D.C., and politicians. I mean, it's as simple as that. That's why she calls for a $12 minimum wage instead of $15 minimum wage. That's why she won't go as far as free public college tuition. That's why she won't go as far as single payer, because the, the victims of doing those things, instead of the people, would be big pharmaceutical companies. Uh, big, big, you know, big uh, public colleges who are right now raking in record profits. Um, it, it goes on. Big oil, big banks, you name it. Those are the industries that would be hit hardest by Bernie Sanders. And Hillary Clinton is surrounding herself and her campaign with people in those industries that do not want those policies inserted. So when she says she's a progressive that's going to get things done, the fine print is what are the things you're going to get done? Her actions speak louder than words who she's ha hosting these fundraisers with, how much money they're giving to her, how much money they uh, bundle and fundraise for her over the years, how much money they've bundled for other Democrats who kind of co the, toe the corporate line. Uh, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't show a woman who's going to get into office and flip them the bird and be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, uh, you know, move to the left and really fight for the pr progressive cause. I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. All I could do is report on it. It's up to you what you do with that. The media is not going to report on these things because they're obsessed with the horse race and the process and Donald Trump's later tw tweet and Donald Trump's latest scandal. They're not going to dig deep into this because, I mean, as I've, always, as I've already reported, uh, Time Warner, which owns CNN, is the number seventh most uh, seventh company on her career donors list. Comcast, who owns NBC and NBC Universal, uh, held a fundraiser for her last year. Their executive vice president, uh, David Cohen, held a fundraiser for her last year. So the media is not going to dig deep into these into these uh, donors, fundraisers, and you know the very very blurry ethical lines going on here. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, I'm going to do more videos like this on the fundraising amount, the donors, the the shady donors. Uh, the disconnect between hi what Hillary Clinton says and how much Hillary Clinton is taking from certain people. Um, so let me know what you think. Also, for more videos like this uh, and some more uh, reports from the field, youtube.com slash TYT politics. we got some really cool videos coming up soon, uh, including today. And we're going to be in Wisconsin on Sunday for the start reporting for the primary. This is Jordan with TYT. Have a nice day.